Hey everybody, GM Kim here today. And yes, I am super excited to share with you my thoughts, no spoilers, on Critical Foundation Season 1. That's right, this lady was the GM for this, and I really pushed to make sure that I had the opportunity to run this tabletop role-playing game. Now, every episode takes between 30 and 40 minutes to play. No joke, every single time, no fail. These were perfectly planned, organized, and timed, and the experience left generally my players wanting to keep watching this TV show, or in this case, engaging in it. Because season one Critical Foundation is built like a television series that has nine episodes. And the very first one, which is episode zero, throws players right into the action. And it's just a ton of fun. So for me, I, I found this to be super, super fun and exciting and, and the thing that I appreciated, because I kind of am a beginner GM, I, I'm, I've played a lot and I've been um, a part of role-playing games and experiences, but for me, running it was uh, intimidating. And I think what this game does is it makes that intimidation much, much less. The, the approachability of this as the GM almost to 100%. I would say anybody could pick this up and run this campaign for their friends. And it's just, I don't know, it's so, so cool because what you do is you get this packet. Now this is for the GM, GM eyes only, don't zoom in. Um, but you have your episode and you've got a little booklet. This is the whole packet here. And it tells you everything you need to know, you open it up and it walks you through the whole thing. And so you've got this one booklet and it's got front page, inside pages, and back page. And there are these highlights that you want your players to engage in and to, um, you know, fight in or to investigate. And so you kind of have to hit those. But what happens is usually dictated by... A skill check and there's this d12 and they have to meet a particular threshold there is uh, an x on the die there are zero one two and three and those are the numbers that you have here in a variety of count so if you ever get the x that's an automatic fail on your uh, one out of 12 chance everything else is going to give you some kind of number and so there are individual checks for things like physical social skills, uh, dexterity challenges like driving and survival and know-how, mental challenges with um, knowledge and investigation. So there's just so many, those are the four different um, attributes and skills, but there are so many different ways to explore everyone's special skills and attributes. And it comes with four characters. So you've got your choice of if you wanna play um, this particular person or this person, but they are essentially the same role. So you've got a military expert, you've got an analyst, you've got a scientist, and you've got a coder. And those are all going to come into play. It's going to be really important that you have someone who's strong and capable, um, which is your military. Your analyst is someone who's going to be able to figure things out um, and, uh, you know, mess, mess with stuff. Um, your scientist is going to be able to get all the science stuff because this is going to be based in some kind of science-y, science fiction future um, and, and medical uh, practice. And then coder, you need someone who's really good at computers. So you've got these characters and they have strengths like dexterity, mental, physical, social. And then they also give you just a little hint at who this person is. But your characters, your players at the table are going to write down their character name on this dry erase board. And they are going to continually shape these characters, giving you their reactions to situations and, and scenarios. It's, it's just so compact. There are two boxes. 
you got a box of little guys, and these are going to be your um, effects. So there's going to be some body effects. Is your character exhausted? Is your character wounded? Is your character disoriented? Those are going to be the effect cards. Um, there's the wound symbol. They're going to be items that they can find um, and explore. They're going to be um, these kind of little um, tablets. These are going to be informations uh, about the person. So are they going to be special forces or a mercenary? Are they going to be private detective or a, or a profiler, a researcher or a forensic physician or a hacker or a programmer? And that's going to further help your characters kind of flesh out who they are. And then they're going to be clue cards. And these are the little guys. Now, clue cards are super important. And you wonder, when do I give these cards out? When do I know what to do? This, this tells you everything. And so as the GM, again, you have, here's the scene. We're going to do like that big opening establishing shot in a TV show. Here's where you are. Here's the situation. What do you do, characters? What do you do? And so then your characters are really going to bring this story to life. And you get to do, as the GM, all the different voices and all the different cool stuff that I really like because I listen to... Uh, the Adventure Zone, and I really get into um, the stories, and I know how much work goes into being the GM. It's just like an insane amount of work. Now, I will tell you this. There is some amount of prep. The better you know the story, the easier it's going to be to provide a seamless experience for your players, but it's not a massive amount of like brainstorming and imaginative work and making sure everything really fits in because they've done the work for you. They have provided these these nine episodes that take characters on this journey of figuring out this web of just crazy stuff that's happening and they get to experience it in real time. So you're providing flair, you're providing mood, you're providing emotion as the GM, and you're really guiding your players through this experience, but you're not generating. There's not, there's not this world generating because again, they've done the hard work for you and you can really just prep by reading and I would say it takes between 30 minutes and an hour to do the GM prep. And then when you play, again, 30 to 40 minutes to actually play the thing itself. So just a ton of fun. Um, and I will say this is just something for you because if you've seen my characters, my Barb and the gang uh, do my um, silly wigs and fun stuff, I, I didn't realize it, but the very first major character that's kind of like their... Um, their connection, their, their point person in the game for the characters, I made his voice Chad. <laughs> and then I had to just keep being Chad. It was very Chad-inspired, not full Chad. Um, but it was just Chad-inspired throughout the entire game. And that's fun. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. And the coolest thing about this is after every episode, you kind of just all go, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. And then the next time you meet back up, just like in a TV show, there's the synopsis. There's the previously on Critical Foundation. And then you ask your players to kind of sum up what happened. And it's kind of like this, you can see like the sequence of, of images. And you're like, oh, well, you know, so-and-so did this and that thing happened. And I hope we don't hear from the city about that. So um, it's just a lot of fun because it always reaches back to that previous episode, connecting it to the one that you're going to play that day. And you kind of hop all over the place when it comes to location. So everything's exciting. Uh, and I just really, I thought the finale really just a home run. It was it was just very satisfying at the end because it all is about that story. And when you get to the end, I'm going to say that final episode took just a little bit longer. It felt like it was two episodes in one, kind of like a double header where you have, you know, like an extended finale. And um, it was just super, super juiced and really, really jam-packed with fun, excitement. And I just can't um, get over how much fun I had. And that's really what role-playing is, is you just want to have 
a fun experience. You want your you want your fights and your fight, you know, battle sequences to be memorable and you want them to be fun and you want people to remember the details and to to joke about, you know, things the next time, you know, that they see each other and that that you see them. Um you want that action to be there. You want the narrative and the story to be there and for the most part they do it for you, but you get to add of course all that flair and emotion and atmosphere, which is just loads of fun. And uh, the investigation parts, it really balances between investigating the mystery and then coming into conflict. So you know, players are not fighting all the time. It's not just a battle, you know, with, with lots of punching. They, they really balance out which characters are going to be particularly valuable in different scenarios. And so sometimes in, in some episodes, you know, you see players get to really shine as a character. And then in another episode, other characters get to really take that um, that lead position. And it's just fun and exciting. So for me, I had a great time. I think it's just absolutely worth your while. I will say there are all these story cards here too. And this is my um, screen as the uh, GM. So what you do is you slide. This is obviously the backside. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you anything. But you slide in all these different um, establishing shots and, and moments that they get to look at inside the screen right here. And that lets you see, oh, well, here's a, you know, character. And so you're going to have like this person standing right here. And you're like, you come around the corner and you see this person. What do you do? And I just, I don't know. Again, I had such, such a good time with it. Um, well organized, super easy to run. And I think just about anybody could do it. And it's worth your investment for nine very in, engrossing and detailed and engaging episodes. Absolutely. Plus, 30 minutes, 30 minutes an episode to actually play. So you can sneak it in. You can absolutely fit this into any game night and you can play as a GM with four characters. And I would definitely recommend playing with a higher count. We played with three, so it was four of us and I ran it and it was still incredibly fun. So thank you so much for letting me just unload about this. I, again, can't recommend this game enough. Absolutely loved it. I'm sold. And now I can package this up because it has not been damaged. And I can give it to another group of gamers who would just absolutely have a blast with it. And I am super excited. I cannot wait. Um, I saw the flyer. It says, coming soon. You can play Critical Sanctuary Season 1 coming soon. So yeah, I'm going to buy that too. <laughs> Maybe I can play that whenever we're all kind of out of uh, session when it comes to school. Maybe it'll be a summer uh, activity. But double, tri triple, quadruple, as many thumbs up as I can give um, this game. It streamlines role playing and makes it super fun for everybody. All right. If you played this game, let me know in the comments below and tell me what your idea is about these really cool uh, role-playing tabletop opportunities. All right, everybody. I'll see you later.